Screw up number one. So Mao Zedong, who was the leader of communist China, came up with this brilliant plan in 1958 to increase grain production. You see, sparrows eat grain, so logically getting rid of sparrows would increase grain production, right? So Mao set out to begin a program of killing all the sparrows in China, and they were actually pretty successful at first. Well, what Mao failed to account for was the fact that they also eat pests. So yeah, there was a huge outbreak of locusts that ate all the grain in the fields, and then caused a famine which killed around 15 to 45 million people. The whole sparrow thing, however, was a part of the Great Leap Forward, which had many more share of screw-ups too. Like how Mao saw the Soviet Union was making a shit ton of iron and steel, and was like, hey, we should do that. Only problem was China was an agricultural nation populated by mostly farmers and not urban factory workers. But that still did not stop Mao. He had the farmers set up furnaces in their backyards and melt down their work tools, antique Buddha statues, you name it. All the stuff they made was unusable though because making still actually requires massive factories with precise instruments to control carbon content, which are operated by skilled workers. But Mao thought those were symbols of capitalist oppression and that backyard furnaces operated by illiterate farmers would work just as well. Screw up number two. So the idea that both Hitler and Napoleon invaded Russia in the winter is actually a myth as both did so in June. But in actuality, their screw-ups were going, well, this Russian invasion screw up by pretty quick. It'll be over before the first snows even hit. Napoleon lost around 500,000 troops to his failed invasion, and Hitler lost over a million. Screw-up number three. So Apple was founded in 1976, most famously by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. But everyone forgets about the third guy, Ronald Wayne. Jobs and Wozniak both held 45% stakes each, but Wayne had a 10% stake as to be the tiebreaker. Wayne actually illustrated the first iteration of the Apple logo and wrote the manual for the Apple One computer. Now, the problem was Wayne was a very risk-adverse investor, as he just finished off paying the debts from some previously failed slot machine venture. And seeing how Jobs had used a $15,000 line of credit to buy parts from a notoriously sketchy vendor made Wayne pretty nervous, so he decided to give up the 10% stake in the company for $800. Had he held on to it, that 10% stake would have been worth a staggering $63 billion today. To be fair though, selling at the time was probably the best move with the information available, which he still maintains today. And in his own words, the stress of holding would have made him the richest man in the cemetery. Screw up number 4. In September 1788, the Austrians and the Ottoman Empire were having one of their many wars. The Austrian army was about 100,000 strong and was led by Holy Roman Emperor Joseph II and was scouting for Ottoman forces on the two sides frontier, and they'd set up camp around the town of Karensebs in modern day Romania. As the story goes, the army's vanguard, a contingent of hussars, crossed the Timis River to scout for the presence of the Ottoman army. There was no sign of the Ottoman forces, but the hussars came across a group of Romani people who offered to sell schnapps to the weary soldiers. Of course, the cavalrymen bought the schnapps and then started to drink. Soon afterwards, some infantry crossed the river. When they saw the party going on, the infantrymen asked for their friends to share. The hussars refused, and while still drunk, set up makeshift fortifications around the barrels. A heated argument ensued, and one soldier fired a shot. Immediately, the hussars and the infantry engaged in combat with one another. During the conflict, some infantrymen began shouting, Turks, Turks! The hussars fled the scene, thinking that the Ottoman army's attack was imminent. Most of the infantry also ran away. Importantly though, the army was composed of Austrians, Serbs, Croats, and Italians, plus other minorities, many of whom could not understand each other, which prevented further communication to prevent further chaos. The situation was made worse when officers in an attempt to restore order shouted, HALT! HALT! which was misheard by soldiers with no knowledge of German as a Turkic battle cry, Allah! Allah! As the Hussars fled through the camps, a corps commander thought that it was a cavalry charge by the Ottoman army, and ordered artillery fire. Meanwhile, the entire camp awoke to the sound of battle, and rather than waiting to see what the situation was, everyone fled. The troops fired at every shadow, thinking that the Ottomans were everywhere. In reality, they were shooting fellow Austrian soldiers. The incident also escalated to the point where the whole army retreated from the imaginary enemy, and Holy Roman Emperor Joseph II was pushed off his horse onto the ground. Two days later, the Ottoman army arrived. They discovered dead and wounded soldiers and easily took care in Zebes. Now, take all that with a grain of salt, however, as there are not really any reliable sources to accurately describe what exactly happened that day, and it is accepted that this telling has been greatly exaggerated over the years. But some sort of disruption definitely did happen that day to make the Austrians retreat from the area. Special thanks to patrons Skylar Weston, Ben Hughes, Zy Mandes, and Hillipack.